number one, Scott Sutton, number 11. Rob Rowan here with Jeff Odom, and we are uh, about to start second half of this very exciting game. It's a four-point game, and as everybody's getting ready, we just got an experience of the Over the Hill Gang, uh, a marching group from Omaha, and uh, made up of uh, some... Uh, quite a drill team. Quite a drill team. They danced and they played, and uh, it was really quite a thing, and... Uh, you're here on X Table, and this game's about to start. So Thank let's you, uh, Omaha. let's go on and check it out. And I do not want to be amiss in not mentioning that the 28 here National Veteran Games wheelchair games are co-presented -pre by the Paralyzed Veterans of America and Department of Veteran Affairs. And uh, we really say thank you, National Veterans Wheelchair Games says thank you. Ooh, X Table bye -bye. says thank you. Uh, for the Paralyzed Veterans of America and the Department of Veteran Affairs again. And we also we'll have... the game, we'll uh, have a little turnover here. A little here. turnover right There's away. From, uh, a pass to the front of Delma's chair. Oh, and there's a turnover back. And he turnover right back with a little... Uh, oh, oh, nice. Going under a there. lot of pressure there. He's and he's a little pressure. Hole, he's and got he's out of the be... fire. He's going to hit those wheels. And he's oh, going to score. Scores for the Reds. That, uh, they, they, they didn't want to have any more points to it. They wanted to keep it within uh, two or three points because you don't want to get a runaway on this game. And no, absolutely not. So the turnovers have been killing them, and that's Red's going to be uh, coming out on fire. That's what they're going to try and do, get some points, make it up. Yep. And uh, also we want to thank uh, HealthNet Ooh. Federal Services. Oh, another turnover. Roy White has just missing on opportunities here. Uh, gray, excuse me, the gray team. And uh, they have out there uh, Paul Mann, 2.5. Scott Severin, he's been out there the whole time. And then we have number one. Number five, Gary McCool. Uh, he's a 1.5. And number 13, Gary Coombs, he's a one-pointer. Wow. They have a 1.5 doing a two-roll. He should be the second ball option. Oh, and a Scott. turnover goes the other way. So they should be working together to try and work that ball up court. That's sometimes that's tough. The one five being, you no, know, typically yeah. you usually see like maybe a three, a two point five, or a two even strong two might be your one of your main ball handlers. Well, but, it almost knocked him out. That's what he was trying to do. Ooh, here comes up the wheels. It's gonna slow the clock. Oh, no, look at that! Scott just much. let him slide by. Yep. Good course, yeah. sir. Scott Severn scoring for the grade. He's counting on him to go for the hit so he could just roll off. And let's talk about uh, the team there. Their low pointer is Mike Norris. No, he's a midpointer, 1.5. He just threw the ball in. That was number three. Uh, of course, Delman, we've been talking Delman about Delvin. He's going to cut back, ball. cut underneath. And he's stealing Scott out of it. And he should have a court. Yeah. So, yeah. takes out the fans. Delvin and Todd Kemery it was made that play happen by taking out Scott Severn, number 11. It's like a local soccer team or something just got taken out. I know that. <laughs> and we have the Brit in, Michael Martin. And uh, what are the Brits doing here? Do we have any idea what they, uh, is this like, uh, they still think we're a colony or something? What's going on? You know, I'm, I never got the total experience um, or total information of how they're invited along with them is also uh, Puerto Rico. And Ooh. I don't think we have any Puerto Rican fans or uh, players, rather. But yeah, I don't know. But I think they are military uh, related in their own countries and somehow okay. they, they are invited. I think the Puerto Ricans, they're mostly from um, somewhere in their army guard or somewhere okay. in their armies. Yeah, but they're invited. Well, the British, uh, boy, that's a nice hit. Easy score. Dylan McMillan. 23 to 20. Still three points with six minutes left in the third quarter. And it's an important uh, thing. Now, I have to say your game was a real thriller, and I wish we had covered that one. I, I was sitting here for a few minutes of that, and I kept thinking, wow. And well, uh, I am so sad right now that that, that wasn't <laughs> on tape. I was looking forward to watching it and seeing what I could learn from it. Like I said earlier, um, it's like every time you get on court, you can learn something. All right. Especially. Oh, that's, a, that's the problem. And this you... game, just like there's so many different physicalities of of everybody out here. And like from, like we said, like 0.5 to 3.5. And just because 
well, I'm a three. Um, a two could always beat me. You know, yeah. mentally he can play oh, oh. man up on me, and if he gets himself positioned right and plays me right, so you can outsmart some players. Oh boy, look at this! Talk about court sense. That was that he was wheeled. Great court he did sense. not have but a quarter of an inch before going out of bounds, and he spun out of that situation. Oh, and look at Looking Scott with the hand. help. And it went off of. Uh, oh, they're going to give it back to. Uh, oh, it's going white. The red team. No, I think they give it to the red team. Are they? They pointed right. Uh, or from our view, anyway. Yeah, but I think they give it to the red team. Oh, it is red. My mistake. That's right. Oh, uh, look at that. Turnover again. Ooh. Not hitting people in the chest. You know, we're trying uh, to get in and get gone, and they're not giving them. Chair to chair, it's like when you don't have the hand function, you you really need to hit those guys right in their lap like that. Even oh, Scott, that. Scott's got right. good hands. Still didn't come up with it. Turn they had over. a little top spin on the ball. Just one right this off floor them. is a little different. We normally will play on a indoor like wooden basketball court. This is a little harder to push, isn't it? It's a might be a little bit slower, but it, it takes a weird good. bounce off of it, too. It's fast. Uh -huh. Well, it's like wood that, bends it somehow or something. I got it within two points here, by the way, just to check with five minutes. And those turnovers are, are going to hurt them back the other way. Turnover, came, to turnover. And there it is okay. again. There's another turnover. Boy, Tried to force the pass. Make good the coverage of Scott. Sure good pass. Coverage of Scott was... Uh, too much for them, and they uh, tried to thread the needle and couldn't come up with it. It's going to make it close. It's going to make it one point here if uh, they score. And uh, it looks like they are. Look at the nice blocking there. Scott. Kevin McMillan. Melvin, quick. Squeeze quick, it in there. Quick as a little one. Scoring for the red. I almost didn't get that all chair all the way through. He spun a little bit. All right. Got in traffic, looking for a hole. Oh, look at that, Good the ball pass. hit him right yeah. in the lap. Oh, fake pass. <laughs> Red pulled yeah. off, he's got room. Oh, Time out, out. White. Uh, time, I don't know how many timeouts that is, but uh, they only have four, and they gotta be very judicious with the use of them. Absolutely. Yeah, so. We had the luxury of last game, we had three timeouts in the fourth quarter. Okay. We utilize that. Actually, utilize one of those to get me back in the game. Yeah. How many timeouts for the red team? How many timeouts does Red have left? Okay. Two and two. We have seen games, and I know you have too, where timeouts were so crucial, Absolutely. and a team uses them all up in one quarter. You know, and uh, it just it is such a get out of jail card sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, it's. I've been in games where we start out, and it seems like they're just all over you. It's that first quarter, everyone's got the jitters. You're not totally warmed up yet, and all of a sudden you're like, "Whoa, we've already used three timeouts. We got one for the rest of the game." Right. And it's like you got to be smart. And sometimes it's, I don't know. You get down that fourth quarter and say you don't have a timeout. It's not the greatest feeling, but you, sometimes it gets rid of those butterflies and you say. Just go for it, and you just make stuff happen. So it's like it can work. Uh, I don't know. I can always go both ways. You get them butterflies, and you just kind of, uh, what do I do? Deer in headlights, and it's tough. Well, I, I, I'm interested to see if they're gonna they make some substitutions here. They still pull man in there, and uh, they Gary Coombs is in. So I guess this is the same lineup. And, uh, Good Gary. pass. Oh, it's a steal. Well, can't get ball. there, can't get there. Pick up the And we are in... Uh, Odom gets taken out on the sideline. All right. <laughs> and here, I got a ball. <laughs> Mike down, Mike down. Yeah, that was close. Mike ball. All right, I got it. Well, we are right on the sideline. Wow, we were right in the action on that one. He took out a few people down there and he took us out, so there we go. That shows you quad rugby is not a sport for the meek of heart. <laughs> Even for the announcers. 
You never know when you're gonna eat the mic. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. All right. They've got some time here, and uh, there's four minutes left in the game. Uh, you know, Scott is uh, there, the nice pass, and they score. Gary Motua. 24-22, back to two points. Up. Kuhau, that's a great name. So Jeff, tell me about uh, your service. You served in uh, what armed force were you in? Um, well, I was in Operation Southern Watch, I guess. Somebody was telling me that technically that's part of the Gulf War. It's like, so I was in uh, Crystal Airways in uh, 99 for about 93, 94 days. And um, I don't know, when I went, we actually had like rooms, we weren't in tents or any of that stuff. It was like, uh, but um, it was still, it was hard. It was like working in the sun. I worked uh, primarily at night. It's like everyone I knew was tan that worked days and I was pale and everyone's like, what is wrong with you? I was pale because I slept all day and we worked. Time out. You know, it's crazy because we worked 12 hours directly on the jet. I was in uh, aircraft maintenance in the phase and um, working with the S-16s. And it, <laughs> I was working 12 hours in the jet. We did like an hour of paperwork, ensuring everything was going on. And then you had another four to five minutes, an hour to, to go home. Sometimes you cut out food. You're just, you're deadbeat. You go and get as much sleep as you can and do it all over again the next day. And, uh, oh, no. A lot, lot, lot of stories like that about uh, uh, the up-tempo and uh, how you can wear out people doing that. And uh, it's a lot, of, lot, of, lot of uh, respect for the military. You know, I, I see a lot of people put that little bumper sticker thing on, and I think that's all nice and good. But the truth of the matter is, yeah. you know, I, I personally, if I go into Starbucks and I see someone well, military, I always well, buy like them whatever coffee they have, have, you know. Olympics I try to do something if I can. I, I challenge you, you out there. The when you see somebody, if I see someone in the airport or in a restaurant I, or wherever they are in the mall and they're in uniform, I always thank them for what they do. Absolutely. And I, and I, I put that out. If you're not a person who serves in the military, uh, then, then thank them for what they do in, in, in any Absolutely. way you can. Not only the not only the veterans, but like any veterans. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, the, the wheelchair veterans. Run all veterans. Page. Guard, anything, reserves. Yeah. That's all. Oh, it's all some of those it. people have, uh, you know, basically put their business up for... Uh, uh, Scott's you know, making a move, working up court, yeah. getting down the screwed up. He just lies a pick. Look at that. Cut Look back. at the way he's... Nice. nice. Got a little bounce. He needs a little help there. He needs a pick. I mean... Ran into a wall of three there. Yeah. It's so funny, I was watching power soccer and they have all these things, three on twos, two on ones and stuff. <laughs> and you could start watching club rugby, you really start thinking, is that allowed, you know? <laughs> I, I, you usually do I do that? a sport, I do one sport, you know, I don't go back and forth at the same day. So from softball, power yeah, soccer, to quad rugby, you know? Yeah, you'll, you'll lose your sense, you'll be like, ball. okay, what? Maybe my sanity. No, I don't know. But anyway. But it's interesting because some of these guys are playing sports, yeah. two different sports in a day, so. Yeah, like playing softball and coming out here, that's. So what else are you doing out here in the, uh, he's got time that's running out on them. They need a score. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, doing some uh, weightlifting. Got 10 seconds. Be doing the bench press. Um, I don't consider myself like really strong, but <laughs> strong enough. Scott Severn. Sorry, that was that was quite a big. So, so you're. Yeah, and I'm doing the, for the first time. I'm doing the slalom, which is a uh, wheelchair obstacle course. That's a whole lot of fun, from what I understand. That I've never done it. Um, it looks like fun. I'm like, yeah, I might be able to do this. Oh, he one wheels it. Almost took himself out. I know. That's the second time he's you done that. You got a little gun shy because the fans are so close. Yeah, I'm but amazed that they're letting that That's close. probably a wall. So you should be used to getting in the goal and getting right back out. On the that's court. true. That's true. Uh, Lock and roll was pretty tight. Oh, Ooh, nice hit there. Collision. That's Scott. He's looking for somebody. Chair position. He's making a move. He doesn't have a pick. 
Scott yeah. needs a pick. Time, Scott. Take he's, time. Up, he's up by one. He needs to score here. Oh, he that's uses. not going to work. Look at the way three of them have locked that in there. Side. They don't want that fourth in the red. They got four in the key right now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to call it. They did. That's a penalty goal. They're going to count a penalty goal, or are they going to put someone in the box? Oh, they're putting him in the box. Yeah. So it well, could be a no goal. goal. So we got no goal was called because nobody was trying to score. It was just... In for the rest, number five, Kenneth Matthews. Well, they, I've seen that a few times where they pulled that and, and, and for some reason. And yeah, the, well, he wasn't attempting to score. He wasn't foreseeably was going to make a goal when that happened. So right. it was he's going to the box. Well... Nice the little break there. as the, the Brits call it. Yeah. There's a nice break here for uh, for the great team because uh, they need to keep scoring. There's a minute left in this quarter. And there Crafty. we go. Nicely done. Scott's summer yeah, squeezes in. How about threading the needle? Yeah. <laughs> he let his chair out right underneath. He faked left and that opened the door and then he went through. You bet, yeah. Some, that's so hard to do. You don't know what they're going to do, so. Well, they're going down for a you quick score. Up. And I think that was probably a good idea, because this way they might get another score, this, you know, to score, score quickly, because the clock is at 53, knowing they're going to probably have at least one more chance to score if they use clock management, and that could bring them back to possibly even tie or, or down one. So, uh, depending on what happens here, so. And here Scott scored quickly again. So now there's 39 seconds left. I wonder if he shouldn't have used more time on that, but let's see how it works out. Time management at the end of a quarter and the end of a game is a huge, huge thing. Oh, big hit. And that was what a take. Well, I don't know how. Scott Severn with the nice clean That has to be. Why wasn't that given to uh, the great team? That wasn't a spin. I don't know. That ball that went off his lap. lap. That went know. off his lap. I don't know what. Maybe it came out front and hit uh, Severn's chair. From uh, our view, we might not have seen that. Uh, maybe not. Oh, look at all those hands. Ooh. Derek finds oh, the ball. God. There's 15 seconds great left. Reach. They're holding it for the last thing. They hold want him out, hold him out, Scott. Delvin looking for that hole. Five seconds left. Look at that, there's a whole way on that side. There's nothing they can do about that. Called timeout. No, I don't know about that. I don't know. Why would he call timeout? That would be horrible. He had a score. No, no. That's the end of the third quarter. It looked like he could have pushed it in five seconds. Looks like he could have pushed it in on that hole. And then he let it slide. He just kind of slowed up. Yeah, I don't believe he knew the uh, time on the clock. That's, and that is one of the issues they have. They don't have the clock seeable and stuff. Right. Well, I, was, I found myself in the bin. I was like, how much time do we have? And I can barely see <laughs> from my angle. All right. Well, we're going to uh, take a little break. End of the third quarter. We have a uh, two-point game. Uh, Gray up by two over the red team. And this is Rob Rowan with uh, Jeff Odom. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 